Forty years ago, a family group from Shannon, Alabama began traveling around singing the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. They were raised in a Christian home by godly parents, Reverend Sally Jacob Campbell Jr. and Christine Campbell. Her father served as pastor of Sparks Gap Baptist Church in Bessemer, Alabama. It was from there they began their ministry for the Lord that through the years has blessed many people in a way that only God could make happen. Join us these next few moments as we pay tribute, share memories, and talk with old friends of the camp. singing and I knew them since before they started singing and they just have always been such a blessing to me and uh, they started first started when Timmy well they were all very young but Timmy was very small and uh, Sandra got started uh, getting Debbie and Timmy up to the piano to sing the three of them sing songs here at Sparks Gap and then uh, later added Ducky and others to the group and it got to be a great, just a fantastic singing group, a good worshipful uh, group of people that know the Lord, know what they're singing about and they've always been such a blessing to me but in talking about when they started back at Sparks Gap, uh, Timmy, believe it or not, 
was tim uh, too timid to get up and sing in front of people. But Sister Beaver sat there on the second seat from the front, and she'd slip him a dollar to get him to get up there and sing. And we found that out later. We didn't know he was getting paid to get up there. <laughs> but he was so shy, she would slip him a dollar to get him to help sing. Sandra would sing, you know, occasionally sang a song, over, you know, uh, congregation with a, what you call it, a solo. I guess it'd be a solo. She would sing a song, and she, she could always sing. And uh, then uh, later on, Timmy and Debbie kind of grew up a little bit, and Timmy got so, I think Miss Beaver played Timmy a quarter or something to sing one time. That big money for Timmy <laughs> back in those days. And they, uh, they started singing, and uh, he started singing with them, and Debbie started singing. And, and uh, they were singing at the church, and somehow or another, they got a, a booking. The first booking I remember them having was at uh, Shady Grove down on, I believe it's Third Grade Road, what we call it. And, uh, little church right down by the river and just Sandra playing the piano and Timmy and Debbie singing and they were just kids you know and uh, but that was really the start of the singing they uh, of course it, it's probably some people that will be at the thing you having that was there and it probably was 25 30 maybe 40 people that singing it's a pretty good little crowd back then but, uh, oh, 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 oh. To be a good group, you must be made up of good individuals. Let's look at the men and women who make up the Campbells. As a young child, Jason's father, Doug, bought him a guitar, but Jason preferred to beat the guitar like a drum instead of play it the way it was intended. For Christmas in 1988, Jason got a new drum set. He quickly learned how to play and faithfully has kept the Campbells on beat ever since.
You mean a lot to me. I knew this would happen. Uh -huh. You working with the Lord and playing for or Him. You remind me so much of my brother. You good at what you do. Keep up the good work. You are faithful. I love you. God loves you. I love all of y'all. And when uh, when I'm playing with y'all and singing with y'all, you're like family. I feel at home with y'all. Y'all keep up the good work. God bless you. Joe comes from a very talented musical family. His mother, father, brother, and sisters have a talent for singing very tight family harmony. Joe specializes in keeping the rhythm. He has been a part of the Campbells for a long time, sometimes relieving Jason on the drums, but always being there to support them. Joe's always uh, been coming to our Sunday school class for the last year or so uh, with us, and he seems to very much enjoy the class. He comes in ready to look at the lesson, ready to listen to Eddie, and he doesn't talk quite as much as some of the rest of us, so I think he probably actually gets a little bit more out of it. <laughs> and of course, I think Joe in his own way is a special gift from God, like many people are, to us. Uh, I equate a recent example of Mama Talbert. I felt like she was a really good gift to our church, and I think Joe, in his humble way, is a great gift for our church. And I've always enjoyed Joe. <laughs> Joe's been my friend for years now. We've been to church at Shannon Baptist for about 37 years. And uh, I've had a good time with Joe. Uh, I know Joe enjoys Christmas. He enjoys vacation Bible school. And we had a good talk one time just on the river and out. We had the river and me and Joe just sat in the shade, watched everybody riding on the sea news and playing. And I enjoyed talking to Joe. And I can always tell when it gets almost game time. Joe's always got out Big Al. As you go through the neighborhood, you'll see Big Al. Joe is a, a good Alabama fan. Joe loves to play the drums. And Joe
Joe has been to a, a, a service to the church. He's dedicated. He's helped out with the camels and so much, and uh, helping to load and unload equipment. He's always there and, and, and ready to help any way he can. So I just want to say that Joe means a lot to me, and he means a lot to the church. And uh, I love Joe. In 1991, a 21-year-old Mark Carson joined the Campbells to sing the bass part. Several years later, he began playing the bass guitar for the group as well. Before singing with the Campbells, Mark was a big fan of the group, often driving into the parking lot of McAdory High School jamming to the Campbells on eight-track cassette tapes. Mark grew up under the preaching of Brother Campbell at Sparks Gap Baptist Church, where his father, Bill Carson, serves as chair deacon. Oh, Mark? You don't have a lot of people to talk about, Mark. Oh, it's understandable. I guess I could say something nice about him. Oh, let me think. Um, he has a beautiful bald head. Maybe one good thing about Mark Carson is his head almost looks as good as mine. Uh, I tried to get his barber, but he wouldn't let me have his barber's number, so I just got my own. But uh, anyway, Mark, uh, I love you, Mark. Mark's a wonderful person. He's, he's like a brother to me. He always has been. Uh, he's been through a lot of the same stuff that I've been through. Uh, he's always bended out a helping hand and always told me that he's there for me. He's always said to just call any time. Uh, he and Shelly both have been like family to me as long as I've known them. And uh, I love singing with Mark. I love being around Mark. He's a, he's a joyful person to be around. Very, very rarely do you ever see him without a smile on his face. Uh, he's always there uh, for anybody. Uh, not just me or, or people that he's close to, but just anybody. He'll be glad to help anybody he can. Uh, hey, Mark. Um, this is from the Gillespie family. Um, Philip is a dad, so I am taking over for us, and we just want to tell you that we love you so much. Um, you have always been a dear friend to us, and um, somebody we could always depend on, and somebody that um, has just always been there for us. And um, I guess musically, my favorite thing about Mark is that um, he can play a song for me perfectly and beautifully, and then as soon as he's done, he will apologize and say that he has messed it up for some reason. <laughs> Um, but that's one of his endearing qualities, so, um, anyway, I love you, Mark. Alright. Mark, you know I love you, and you're the best thing that's ever happened to me, and one part of being married to Mark is that I get to be a part of such a great thing as the Campbells and get to go to all the singing, so I'm not just a little groupie anymore, with Brad and Missy following them around the different churches and singing songs in the car, and our favorite, by the way, is Footsteps, so please.
always bring that back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, Mark, I love you and thank you for letting me be a part of all this and thanks for letting me be your mom. Love you. Oh, and my favorite is, um, I'm gonna move. Yeah. Helen Allen, or she's more commonly known, Ducky, joined the group in the 1970s. She's the sister-in-law of Sandra, her powerful, rich, unique alto voice, along with her ability to laugh at everything, added so much to the group. Ducky was encouraged to sing by her parents, the late Reverend Hubert Talbert, who pastored Shannon First Baptist and played the piano until his death in 1968, and her mother, Cora Talbert, a dear saint of God, who just recently made her journey to meet the Lord. In recent years, Ducky's been unable to travel with the group due to health problems, but she can still wear back her head and sing out with a powerful alto like few others can do. newly saved Christian looking for a church to go to. Very shy person, but met one of the best friends I'd ever meet in my life. Ducky's always inspired me to be the teacher and that she'd be the helper. But in life, actually, Ducky was the teacher. She taught me not by things that she had read, but by the example she lived in her life. Before I was saved, people said, if you become a Christian, you're an old prune. You're sad, you're never happy. They never knew Ducky. To be around Ducky and to hear her laugh and clap those hands can make you feel good on your worst day. She inspired me. Ducky's also a tremendous motivator. I didn't have much self-confidence, but anything that I do, whether it be bake a cake, teach a class, or make a dress, Ducky always made me feel like I did the very best job. In